Good morning. Uh, thank you to you all for coming um, to this briefing. Um, I hope you've had and have had time to read um, the interim um, policy document. Um, in a minute, I'll explain the general approach that we've taken um, on this issue and highlight um, the key parts of the interim policy document. Um, and then I'll take um, questions. Um, can I just make a few preliminary remarks before I do so? Um, first, um, assisted suicide um, is an offence set out uh, in statute and only Parliament can change the law. I'm not able to do so uh, and nothing in the interim policy should be taken as me doing so. Uh, neither am I able to provide individuals with a guarantee that they will or will not be prosecuted if they do or do not do certain acts. Um, however, uh, when Parliament passed the law in 1961, it recognised that the ways in which people commit suicide and how others may assist are very varied. It therefore provided a, a discretion whether or not to prosecute by requiring the Director of Public Prosecutions to consent uh, to any prosecution. Uh, that discretion not to prosecute provides essential flexibility to prosecutors, uh, being able to translate the often blunt words of a criminal statute into a meaningful decision based on the individual facts of a case enables compassion to be shown uh, where appropriate. That discretion, of course, has been exercised for many years, uh, but in July, the House of Lords required me to publish a policy setting out the factors that I take into account in exercising that discretion. Uh, the interim policy that you now have um, is a result of that judgment. It is of immediate effect uh, and applies from now on to any act uh, in England and Wales coming within the terms of the interim policy. Uh, Recognising that we prosecute on behalf of the public and that the issue of assisted suicide is one on which people have deeply held views uh, uh, one way or the other, um, I have decided to consult on the interim policy with a view to producing a final policy um, in early 2010. Um, and this marks not only the publication of the interim policy, but the start of the consultation process. Um, I'm very keen for that consultation to be as wide as possible. Can I then turn to the um, policy itself and just highlight um, the approach we've taken uh, and that is uh, to protect uh, the vulnerable um, from those that might gain by assisting their suicide, but at the same time uh, to identify as far as it's possible to do so those cases where it would not be appropriate to prosecute. Um, looking at the policy document, um, the um, words under paragraph 6 are important, namely that there will be, in all these cases, an investigation by the police, and it will be the information that that investigation turns up that will um, be relevant to the consideration of the um, factors set out in this interim policy. Um, we work closely with the police at an early stage uh, of those investigations. So far as the decision-making process is concerned, as set out in paragraph 7, there are two stages. The first stage is an assessment of whether um, there's sufficient evidence to provide a realistic prospect of a conviction. Uh, only if that is the case um, do we go on to consider uh, whether a prosecution is needed in the public interest. And the focus of this document, as you will have seen, is on the second stage. We deal with the evidential stage of paragraphs 9 through to 13. Um, can I highlight paragraph 10, which simply sets out what needs to be proven for the evidential stage to be satisfied, namely the victim committed or attempted to commit suicide, and the suspect assisted them in doing so. You'll appreciate from simply reading that paragraph how broad the offence of assisted suicide is, 
um, and thus why Parliament thought it sensible to have a discretion in the DPP in considering um, the cases that should be prosecuted and those that shouldn't. Uh, and at paragraph 12, the policy makes the important point that the act of suicide requires the victim to take his or her own life. Uh, it remains murder or manslaughter to cause the death of someone who wishes to commit suicide but is unable to do so for him or, or, or herself. So this policy does not cover um, euthanasia, which is a separate offence uh, under the law and remains an offence. Can I then turn to the public interest stage? Paragraph 15 makes it clear that the factors that we've identified in this policy uh, are, are, are set out to be taken into account, um, but deciding on the public interest is not simply a matter of adding up the numbers of factors on each side and seeing which side has the greater number. Uh, it, it, and in some cases, a single factor may be um, so powerful that it outweighs um, all others. At paragraph 17, we make the important point that it may sometimes be the case that the only source of information about the circumstances of the suicide uh, and the state of mind of the victim is the suspect, uh, and prosecutors and investigators um, should make sure that they pursue all reasonable lines of, in uh, of further inquiry in order to obtain, uh, wherever possible, independent verification of the suspect's account. Turning then at paragraph 19 to the public interest factors in favour of prosecution, they're set out in subparagraphs 1 through to 16. Uh, I'll just touch on them briefly. First, that the victim was under 18 years of age. Secondly, that the victim's capacity to reach an informed decision was adversely affected by a recognised mental illness or learning difficulty. Third, the victim did not have a clear, settled and informed wish to commit suicide. Fourth, the victim did not indicate unequivocally to the suspect that he or she wished to commit suicide. Fifth, the victim did not ask personally um, on his or her own initiative for the assistance uh, of the suspect. Sixth, the, the victim did not have a terminal illness, a severe or incurable physical disability or severe degenerative physical condition for which there was no possibility of recovery. Seventh, the suspect was not wholly motivated by compassion, uh, uh, for example, that they stood to gain in some way from the death. Uh, and eight, that the suspect persuaded, pressurised or maliciously encouraged the victim to commit suicide or exercised improper influence in the victim's decision to do so. Now, a dotted line really needs to be drawn under subparagraph 8, because as I've indicated in paragraph 20 following, those factors, i.e. 1 to 8, uh, are the factors um, which in most cases will carry more weight than the other factors in favour of prosecution. Nine through to 16 are the other factors that fall, as it were, into the second category, uh, namely that the victim was physically able to undertake the act that constituted the assistance, him or herself. The suspect was not the spouse, partner or close relative or close personal friend of the victim. Eleven, the suspect was unknown to the victim and assisted by providing specific information via, for example, a website or publication to the victim to assist him or her in committing suicide. Twelve, the suspect gave assistance to more than one victim who were not known to each other. Thirteen, the suspect was paid by the victim or those close to the victim for their assistance. Fourteen, the suspect was paid to care for the victim in a care or nursing home uh, environment. Uh, Fifteen, the suspect was aware the victim intended to commit suicide in a public place where it was reasonable to think that members of the public may be present. And finally, 16, the suspect was a member of an organisational group, the principal purpose of which is to provide a physical environment, uh, whether for payment or otherwise, uh, in which to allow another to commit suicide. Um, so those are the factors identified in favour of prosecution 
Um, and as I say, they're essentially divided into two groups, those that carry uh, more weight being subparagraphs 1 to 8. Turning then to the public interest factors against prosecution, paragraph 21 onwards, first, the victim had a clear, settled and informed wish to commit suicide. Second, the victim indicated unequivocally to the suspect that he or she wished to commit suicide. Third, the victim asked personally on his or her own initiative for the assistance of the suspect. Fourth, the victim had, um, and then the same list, a terminal illness, severe or incurable physical disability or a severe degenerative physical condition from which there was no possibility of recovery. Fifth, the suspect was wholly motivated by compassion. Six, the suspect was the spouse, partner or close relative or a close personal friend of the victim within the context of a long-term and supportive relationship. And seventh, the actions of the suspect, although sufficient to come within the definition of the offence, were of only minor assistance or influence. Um, all the assistance which the suspect provided was a, as a consequence of his or her uh, usual lawful employment. And again, um, essentially a dotted line uh, to be drawn under subparagraph 7 to indicate that um, everything that's in paragraphs 1 through to 7 of 21 um, is in most cases likely to carry more weight than the other factors as factors against prosecution. Um, and then the other factors, subparagraph 8 through to 13, uh, first, the victim was unable physically um, to undertake the act that constituted the assistance themselves. Uh, Subfactor 9, the suspect had sought to dissuade the victim from taking the course of action which resulted in his, his or her suicide. Tenth, the victim had, had considered um, and pursued to a reasonable extent recognised treatment and care options. Eleven, the victim had previously attempted to commit suicide um, and was likely to do so again. Twelve, the actions of the suspect may be characterised as reluctant assistance in the face of a determined wish on the part of the victim to commit suicide. And finally, thirteen, the suspect fully assisted the police um, in their inquiries. Um, and um, we indicate at paragraph 23 that the evidence in support of these factors must be sufficiently close in time to the assistance to allow the prosecutor reasonably to infer that the factors remained operative um, at the time. Uh, and then at 24, um, the list of these factors is not exhaustive. Um, and ultimately, each case must be determined um, on its own facts and on its own um, merits. Um, as I said at the outset, this interim policy is of immediate effect and as of today, um, all cases of assisted suicide that fall to be considered by us as prosecutors will now be considered according to this interim policy. Um, at the end of the consultation period, um, a final policy um, will be published.